Hello and welcome back and that is right today we are returning to the subject of Plex and today we are looking at the brand new F4 424 Pro from Terramaster and as that is rocking out the gate with a very very interesting CPU the Intel Core i3 here which is otherwise known as the Intel N300 a very new CPU arriving I believe at the start of 2023 in this video happening at the start of 2024 this CPU arriving on this NAS with not the lowest price tag I believe it's knocking around at the 599699 mark depending on where you are in the world and this NAS I would argue right now at the start of 2024 is probably the best 4 bay 4 Plex Media Server for the money out there. And although I've already done provisional testing when I was looking at this NAS and its own review, I will say for Plex Media Server testing today, we are really going to put this through its paces. Some of these tests I've not performed, some of which are going to be very dependent on hardware transcoding, and other ones are simply going to come down to how efficiently Plex is being handled by TOS, the software that is included with every TerraMaster NAS. But a few disclaimers straight off the bat. Number one, we are using OBS to record today's video. The result is that occasionally you may see a drop in frame rate, slight pixelization. If that does happen because of the Plex Media Server, I will highlight it. But if I don't highlight it, that may well be because of the recording. Although I am going to have here running in the background the Plex Client tool for Windows, something I'll refer to later on. The majority of today's tests are going to be conducted in the web browser. The reason being twofold. Number one, um, although it does have an impact on the amount of CPU utilization and resource use, um, on the web browser I have a greater degree of control control over things like conversions in order to uh, bench test and stress this system in very precise ways. But returning to the subject of transcoding and conversions, it's worth highlighting the other reason we're using the web browser and not the client tool is because of this. I've talked about in other videos, you can fast forward it if you already know, but let's have a look here. This 4K trailer down here, if we were to play this file here, otherwise known as roast duck, you can see this file it's pretty dense. It's a 60 megabits per second file, which is already pretty massive compared to most of the media you've got at home, but it's also utilizing highly efficient video codec, otherwise known as H.265. And we play back this file using the tool that's included or available to Windows here, this client tool will play this file in its original quality absolutely fine there. You can see it running fine, no problems whatsoever. The dark orange there, the buffering is absolutely fine. It's running at the original quality. And here on the right-hand side of the screen, you can see CPU utilization is non-existent. And indeed, as the file plays there in the background, you can see it's in the original quality, no transcoding. Everything's running fine. Now, what about if we play that exact same file here in the web browser? We can go in. There's our TNAS here on the left-hand side of the screen. We're going to select our 4K trailers. We're going to go ahead and select exactly the same file, exactly the same quality. But this time, as you can see here on the bottom of the screen, the file is being converted. Why is it being converted? Well, that is because the web browser, in this case, does not have support of HEVC. And you'll be very surprised how many devices do not support HEVC. And it forces the system to have to convert that file. And as you can see, buffering hasn't completed it, but it's still way ahead of playback and it's able to convert that file and keep it at the 4K quality threshold. On the top right of the screen there, you can see not only is it playing the file, but it's also transcoding it with the HW, meaning we are taking advantage of hardware transcoding. Another lovely thing, ensuring that as long as you're using a Plex Pass subscription, you're able to take advantage of that hardware transcoding. And indeed, if we make our way into the um, settings of this particular uh, Plex server NAS, we can make our way into the general options there, go down into the transcoder. We've set it to make my CPU her. And here at the bottom, you can see that although it's set to auto, it's just automatically going to be using that Alder Lake integrated graphics this CPU has on board. I believe 1.3 gigahertz max integrated graphics. So we've got a lot of horsepower for us to play with. But without further ado, let's make our way back into the performance and start conducting our tests. Now, despite this being something like the 30th or 40th Plex Media Server test that we've done in two years, it's worth highlighting that we are hitting something of a problem with Plex Media Server testing here on YouTube. And it means it's very, very difficult for us to use media that already exists elsewhere. Because every time we try to use media files that you are aware of, one of the big problems is YouTube copyright strikes and YouTube's um, content recognition ID system resulting in the video either being demonetized or taken offline. So unfortunately, we can't use 
any pre-existing media even when we use the trailers on several occasions when we've used some of these trailers the result has been that some of the uh, original content copy uh, and copyright owners have stopped the video being monetized or shared so unfortunately we only can only utilize currently um um video files here that are freely available license free online or ones we've created ourselves and currently in the background myself and eddie are coming up and building our very own range of multimedia test files moving forward for plex media server but as of the 8th of january they aren't completed so for now we're going to be using a mixture of the 4k trailers here on our 4k trailer file test list and of course the jellyfish files which are all available in 1080p and 4k of varying sizes and scales throughout the course of these tests we may even include some early 8k testing as well so in order to get a nice early benchmark we're going to look at the most basic file we have at least for these tests the jellyfish fish 3 megabits per second hd h.264 file and h.264 is less efficient than hevc but it has to be said it's still a pretty darn good compression technique supporting both 1080p and 4k so when we play back that file we're playing in the original quality there there at the bottom original 3 megabits per second and it's playing absolutely fine 3 megabits per second or 3 megabit of the bit rate isn't something that a lot of people are going to have most media people have in their homes and domestic media at least lives around about one to one and a half megabits per second and if you're running hd media the majority of that is definitely going to be lower than this but still nonetheless this played absolutely fine and here on the right no real concerns here in terms of cpu utilization whatsoever so let's ramp things up a wee bit here we're going to go for 10 megabits per second we're going to go for a 10 megabits per second hevc 10 megabits per second so that's hdr uh, file there so we'll play that one there bring that up there at the bottom we're playing in the original quality as well and again we will convert that manually in just a moment but as you can see right hand side virtually no dip you know 1.55 percent and it's gone down of course because we are playing with 30 um, second files the actual length of the bump is going to differ than that of a 90 or 120 minute feature film but still nonetheless it's still good to have that as a benchmark we're going to go for a 30 megabits per second hevc file there going to play that open up here at the bottom it's going original quality but this time we're going to convert we're going to convert it automatically first so that's going to maintain the quality as best it can as you can see cpu utilization has gone up a fraction five percent and what if we go for a more aggressive conversion so this time we're going to convert it down to 480p why would we do that who would want that well what if you're accessing your copy of avatar in 4k and you want to watch it on a mobile phone at a train station on the other side of the world you may well want to go down to 480p in those circumstances and luckily this has done an absolute stellar job converting that file nothing to write nothing to um, report badly next up let's start making our way into the 4k region and before we go any further it's worth highlighting one of the things we've highlighted in previous videos before and something we're recognizing more and more is certain throttling measures that are built into chrome so to put it into perspective there is that 100 megabits per second hd file there and if we play back that file here straight away you're going to see the orange buffering here at the bottom right immediately fill up but the problem is there are limitations of data flow built into Chrome. And unfortunately, it means that even though this NAS could definitely handle this file and CPU utilization is fine, there's something of a throttling happening there within the web browser. Whereas testing the exact same file here on uh, Microsoft Edge here, there doesn't seem to be that limitation. So as you can see, we're playing that file there, and this is even the HEVC version here. So that's a denser file that's requiring conversion. We do not have that same problem. We're still using hardware transcoding, as you can see there. But for the rest of the 4K test, we will have to resume in Microsoft Edge, even though I'm not a huge fan of Bing anyway. And Edge in general, at the very least, we're able to conduct these tests a little bit more effectively. And as you can see, that HEVC file still not troubling the CPU really next up we'll go for some denser 4k multimedia there so we're going to go for an hevc 120 megabits per second ultra hd 4k file again converting is going to happen there is our hardware transcoding there is a the file being played there is the cpu utilization and there is 3.72 percent utilization very small indeed now to put this into a little bit of perspective if we head back into the terramaster nas and have a look at the files that we're playing here 
just to give you some idea about how big some of these files are, when we look at the jellyfish files here, I'm just going to max screen that, you're able to see that as we make our way down the list, oh, sorry, up the files here, as we go into these 4K files, the 120, the 200 megabit, the 400 megabit file, some of these files go at half a gig all the way up to 1.4 gigabytes for that 400 megabits per second file. And bear in mind, that 400 megabits per second 4K file, if we play it here, we are playing a 30 second file. That's 30 seconds at 1.4 gigabyte. That's an enormous file for us to be playing. And I'm pleased to say the TerraMaster with hardware transcoding is converting it like a dream. And CPU utilization, once again, is really no concern whatsoever. So right now, this thing is absolutely smashing through a lot of those files that we're testing today. And at least as far as Plix Media con Server is concerned, we're seeing some great numbers here. So as I get the NAS set up for some 8K Plex performance testing, I think just before we reach that point, I think what we should do now is test some multi-user access on this system. So what we're gonna do is duplicate this tab several times, and we're gonna run multiple instances of the files that we want to test today at once, just to see how this system handles a lot of the workload that we are about to throw at it. So. Let's go ahead into this. We're going to go into those 4K trailers this time. And from the 4K trailers, I'm going to run numerous of these simultaneous instances at once to see how the system runs them. So first off, we're going to go with into the cave. While it runs into the cave, I'm going to go ahead and make sure we select uh, the TerraMaster NAS. And we're going to go for that roast duck. We're going to leave that running there in the background. We're going to go for another one here with 4K trailers. And this time we're going to go for Beauty of Taiwan. We're going to leave that running there in the background. And simultaneously, we're going to go in and go into the uh, larger files here. And do you know what? We're going to run that massive 4K file there. Let's see how the Plex Media Server is handling this work. We're definitely seeing a bump. And if we look here at the top, there is all of our multiple instances, all of which are using hardware transcoding throughout the course of these tests. Oh, apart from Cave of Wonder, which is playing native, but all the way through, although we saw a pause there on the left-hand side of the screen, which there is every possibility it could be that my own system is lagging there, still nonetheless, we're still seeing some great performance there from the Plex Media Server while running all of these tests. So I would say right now, as far as Plex Media Server testing is, although this 400 megabit file is certainly seeing some you know, dribs and drabs and blockages there, which again may come down to my own client system by the looks of things, looking at the memory utilization at the very least, let alone the GPU. I'd say right now we're still looking at a very <clears throat> capable system overall, but let's make our way over to some of those 8K tests. Right, so the 8K media has been moved over to the NAS system here, but of course, when it comes to 8K media, the big throttle isn't going to be the NAS itself. In a lot of cases, when you reach a certain power level, it's going to be the client hardware. Now, I'm pleased to say that I can play 8K media on this, but depending on the browser I'm going to use, that is really going to be the problem. To put it into perspective, let's go for this file here, Japan 8K, and if we play back this uh, 8K file here, <clears throat> we can play here and we can see here we're being forced to convert the file. A lot of this to do with uh, the 8K is utilizing even newer compression techniques than the ones we've talked about thus far. And 8K on this, although it seemingly is trying to handle it, it's just a question of one, whether the browser is going to be in any way capable of outputting this, but also whether the bandwidth is going to be afforded to it enough to in order to play this file. As you can see, it's still able to use hardware transcoding to convert this file, but playback is still going to overwrite that of buffering soon enough and as you can see it freezes so at least in terms of 8k we have to eliminate whether the issue is anything to do with my client system or it is to do with the NAS itself so if we come out of that file there go back in to the client application here for my Windows desktop machine and this time we play that exact same file uh, we go for this one here we go to the library find the file Japan 8k and play back that file natively you're able to see that natively the file being played on its own it is playing buffering is staying ahead um, of uh, organic playback and if we look at utilization on my local machine we can see that my GPU there is being absolutely hammered by this. <clears throat> I think what this does is largely um, 
a show that it is the client hardware and aka my recording laptop here that is something of the problem and if i was utilizing an aktv or i wasn't using obs to record this file and i was utilizing 8k ready hardware this nas would be more than ready to output 8k for those users and it's just a shame really that i can't really emulate and show the performance of 8k on this given it i believe this n300 cpu that i3 is definitely capable of that and for a terra master nas the largely considered budget end of the turnkey nas market in order to be able to do this is very very impressive indeed and if we try and play any of the other 8k files I'm pleased to say that we can play them but unfortunately because of that drop in frame rate from the client hardware and the handling of it we're just not really going to be able to do anything about it what if we use the client app to downgrade this to hd let's say we own a file in um, 8k but we don't have any 8k ready client devices does this system have the oomph in order to convert this file and it doesn't look like it does it would be nice if it could and look at that CPU spike during that request, going all the way up quite substantially there to a rather comedic reading 312%, which I do not believe is realistic at all. But still, nonetheless, it still does bring into question that there is the ability to, at the very least, play these files natively. But whether the hardware is to convert it, that's a matter for debate. Overall, I'd say performance of Plex Media Server here on the Terramaster F4424 is pretty darn good. When we look at what you're getting for your money here, in terms of the hardware capabilities, in terms of the performance, and certainly at the start of 2022 for a 4-bay NAS with 32 gig of DDR4 memory, it might even be DDR5 memory, combined with that 8-core CPU, it's a great little bargain for this 4-bay with that new and improved chassis with those M2 and VMEs inside. Bear in mind that TOS 5.1 isn't still as feature-rich and as smooth as the likes of QNAP QTS or Synology's DSM platform, but it's still pretty darn good. And they have introduced a number of quite interesting applications for file management, security, backups, multimedia, and surveillance. All of that being rolled into the latest version of TOS. But apart from that, this has been Plex Media Server Performance of the brand new F4 44 Pro from Terramaster. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Should other brands be concerned about this? Is this something that would make you DIY buyers look again? Let me know. Apart from that, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.